turn on TV. Go home. Alexa. Go to ESPN on YouTube TV. Go to ESPN2. Alexa. Pause. Alexa. Go home. Alexa. Turn off TV. Been about a week now since the Fi TV Cube has been released. I did do a full review on that. Definitely check it out if you're in the market for a streaming device. Fi TV Cube brings a lot of new features and it's set to compete with some of your most popular streaming devices that's out there. I'll link that video in the description, definitely worth checking out. So for this video, what I wanted to do is just go over some of those smart functions that makes the Fire TV Cube unique. This will work on your Fire TV sticks as well, but you need the Alexa button on your remote in order to do so. The first thing to get to your settings to actually uh, play with your smart functions, you're gonna need to go over to your gear icon. You're gonna go down and you're gonna go to equipment control. So I am currently connected to a Roku uh, TV and uh, for your specific TV, it might be a little bit different, but we're gonna go into some of the settings on the TV as well, just to make sure everything's working properly. Now under equipment control, you can see I have uh, equipment control, manage equipment and set up equipment again. So let me take you through the setup process. Gonna tell you he's gonna override all the settings. Let's go ahead and do it. All right. Using Fire TV remote to control your devices. All right, we're gonna continue to the setup. All right, make sure your Fire TV cube is connected to your device and it should automatically detect what device or what compatible device your Fire TV cube is connected to. All right, so you can see right there it says that my Fire TV detected the TCL TV. Is this correct? So you can see it detected the TCL TV and it's asking me to confirm. Now, if you have a stereo system, it should detect that as well. If you have a surround sound speakers, uh, it should detect those as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click yes. It's gonna ask you if you wanna add a sound bar. For this setup, I do have speakers, but they're just stereo. So I'm just gonna leave, go ahead and skip. So now it'll try to turn your TV on and off. So this is basically just getting information from the TV. It will turn it off here in a second and then it will turn it back on. Turning your TV off. This may take a minute. Please wait. Turning your TV back on. This may take a minute. Please wait. All right, so there it goes. Turn the TV back on. All right, next we're testing the volume. You can hear the music playing. We're gonna click yes. Now it's gonna mute. All right, so we did confirm that it muted it a couple of times. Click yes. And basically we're all done. So that was the basic setup, but you can go in there and make some changes just to customize it to your particular device. So if you go to manage equipment, I'm gonna go to TV. All right, now we have a couple options. So now we have the volume increment. So basically when you tell it to turn up the TV, you can select how much you want it to turn up. So right now I have increments of five, but you can press the rewind and fast forward button to bring it up or bring it down. So now let me just lower to increments of three. So now when I tell it to turn up the volume, it should go in increments of three. They also have some timing for your infrared TV where you can control that. You can uh, change the IR profile. So basically you can sign this to your TV or check for updates. They have timing as well. So if your TV is frequently not responding to IR signals, increase the intervals. So that you can play with as well, as well as the repetition guys. So now the number of times the same IR signal is sent to your TV. So for me, I have it once and it's been working fine. However, if you find that you're sending signals or you're doing something and it's not powering your TV on, you can go ahead and play with that settings. Power control is another big one, guys. For me, I want to come in, I want to tell it to turn on the equipment, and I just want it to go to a certain place where I want it. So for instance, if I turn on the TV, I don't want it to go to my input selection, I don't want it to go to the native TV, 
menu. I want it to go straight to my Fire TV. And this is where you'll, you'll control those. There's also some settings in your TV, which I'll go over here in a little bit. So just the power on, power off settings for your TV. So right now, if your TV is not responding to IR signal after powering on, increase this delay. So again, if you're having problems after doing the initial setup, you can go ahead and change that as well. Um, you do have this screen where if your TV is not powering off, you can change it. So like I said, for me, everything's working fine. I'm just gonna leave those settings. Input switching is a big one. So right here, guys, uh, for me, like I said, I don't want my TV going to a different input or going to the native TV menu. And this is where you can kind of fine tune some of those. So uh, the first one is the input change type. So select how you use your original remote to change your input on your Fire TV. Fire TV will follow the same method when change input. So this is where you can basically learn or teach your, your device how to uh, change your inputs on your TV. This one again is a big one, change which input to switch to for your Fire TV Cube or your Fire Stick or whatever you use it. Mine is input two, um, but this is basically detecting on your TV what inputs are available and it'll automatically switch to that input for your Fire TV. So you can see that mine is two and I can test the input by hitting the menu button. So under the advanced settings, one that I found that was really useful is the power on and input. You have two basic options. So one that definitely should be selected is Fire TV Cube should be selected here on the power input. That's if the Fire TV Cube or your Fire Stick is the main input on your TV. So what this does attempts to return the Fire TV Cube input when you turn your TV on. Um, so basically, whenever you tell it to turn on TV, it knows to default to that input. That way you won't have to run around, grab your original TV remote to try to change the input. So this should definitely be on. Um, so that's as far as the Fire TV settings. Um, one setting I wanna get into, and this is unique to Roku, but if you have a Samsung TV, there should be something similar. So let me go home on the main um, settings on the Roku. So what you wanna do is go to the left. We're gonna go down to settings. We're gonna go all the way down to system. On the system, we're gonna to go to power. And this is where you can select your default input as well. So even if you turn on the TV with your remote, it should go to whatever input you want. So you can see right now, I do have it set to my uh, streaming box, which is input two, but you can go down and you can select um, home screen, you can select last use, live TV. So you have a lot of different options here, guys. And uh, again, as a fail safe, maybe something's not going right with this input you should be able to do something similar on your tv just to make sure the transition is seamless so that's what i want to talk to you guys again today is just that with the fire tv cube uh you have the advantage of not having to have the remote but you can do the same things on your fire stick just to better control your equipment if this video is helpful definitely hit the thumbs up if you're new to the channel subscribe thank you for watching again and i'll catch you on the next one